But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down to the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up! Call upon your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea might quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done it as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mighty, mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, It is right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, and sat down east of the city, and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, 
God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, It is right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's the longest part of the entire service today. I think we're the most read sermon. Our Holy Gospel, though, comes from St. Luke, the 18th chapter, the 13th verse. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. The Gospel of our Lord. Okay, kids. There's not many of you. Arlo, could you stand over here and everything we ask of you, you're saying no. Okay? Asia, could you stand over here and everything we ask of you, you say yes. Okay? Am I on? I'm not. Okay. I'm the mother. All right? We're going to ask these two children of mine to do some tasks. And I need your help. One of you shout out something you want them to do. Like, for instance, kids, go do the dishes. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. Somebody else. Sweep my your hand. <laughs> wave your hand. What'd you say? Sweep my arms. Sweep your arms. Okay. Wave my hand. Wave your hand. Okay. No. No. Sweep the rugs, please. Okay. Okay. Fold the laundry. What? Fold the laundry. Oh, I love that. Fold the laundry, please. Okay. You have to speak loud. We can't hear them. You have to say it loud. Yes. Thank you. No. Clean the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> like that one too. Would you clean the bathroom, please? Of course. Of course. Would you clean the bathroom, please? No. <laughs> one more. Take the dog for a walk. Would you take the dog for a walk? Yes. Would you take the dog for a walk? I don't have a dog, so no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I said you have a dog. You have a dog. I'm your mother at this point. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Well, all right, kids. You know what? I think I'm going to take both of you to dinner. What is your favorite place? Buffalo Wild. Buffalo Wild Wings. And what's your favorite place? Um, McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay, well, Asia, I think we're going to take your brother and you to Buffalo Wild Wings. And if he's been saying no to everything and you've had to do all of it, what is your response to me? I can't hear you. No. When I heard you. It's not fair. Is it fair that I take the naughty boy with me and go where he wants to go and you have to go where he wants to go? Is that fair? No, it's not fair. But in our story today, Jonah <laughs> kept saying, no, no, no. And, and, and the city of Nineveh was awful. They were terrible, terrible people. And God was going to destroy all of them. <clears throat> but Jonah asked that the city be saved. And all the people came and told God they were sorry. That they would try to do better. And so God saved them. Would you say you're sorry for saying no to everything that was requested of you? 
Ah, uh, sure. Who cares? Of course I would. It's all pretend. <laughs> and God forgives you. So does your mother, I'm sure. So that's the moral of the story. There are times when we do not like the behavior or how someone is acting. But we do have to forgive them. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for forgiving us. Especially when we're bad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you are bad. <laughs> Is the matter of 
perspective depends on how you look at it. When God called on Jonah to proclaim destruction to his mortal enemies, Jonah tried to run away. But even in that deep, dark sea, where he thought he could hide, God found him, granted him a second chance. God gave a second chance to Nineveh also, and everyone God encountered here was filled with the abundance of God's mercy. God does the same thing for us. He gives us second chances. He gives us time to stop looking inward and look outside of ourselves and change our perspective. So may we turn from our inward selves to an outward look and see the grace that God offers to us over and over again. Amen. I would like a show of hands of all of our veterans here. Good. Oh, good. Very good. Get the pay. Thank you so much for your service and your time. And I know all over town you can get free things this Tuesday for Veterans Day. But we really appreciate you. Thank you very, very much.
still used him to powerfully and effectively proclaim your word of grace. Likewise, use us despite our flaws and resistance to your call for the fil fulfillment of your mission in the world. In time, oh, sorry, God of mercy. <laughs> in terms of change or upheaval, we are tempted to withdraw and be concerned only for ourselves. Open us to our neighbors, especially those with whom we disagree, and encourage us to seek understanding across the lines of belief and loyalty. God of mercy. The seas are once again crying out against the injustices which have been done to them. Empower all those working to clean the earth's oceans and prevent further loss and damage to your beautiful creation. God of mercy. Self-absorption separates us from the healing blessings of community and mutual support. Help us reach out to those who have isolated themselves and use us to spread your spirit's healing grace. God of mercy. Your departed saints are gone only from our sight, not really separated from us in spirit. Keep us bound together in ties of love and bring us to that day when we will all be reunited in your kingdom. God of mercy. God of red and blue states, God of purple people, hear our prayers. After the election, some will rejoice, let them not gloat. After the election, some will grieve, let them not despair. Heal our way forward, soften our hardened hearts, inspire us to be just, kind, and humble. May we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to hope. Receive our prayers and assure us of your unfailing mercy, which is ours through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I want to welcome our visitor this morning. Make sure everybody, Brendan, make sure everybody says hi to him. Deborah? Um, I just want to make an announcement to let you guys know because so many people have been kindly sending cards to me and praying and asking. Um, almost two weeks ago, I had spinal nerve block injections and fell into the 15% of people who had immediate relief. It normally can take up a whole week and then someone's doesn't even work. 
And I'm happy to say that um, I still have occasional discomfort and I still have occasional twinges of the nerve pain, but it, it goes away. I just stop walking for a minute or stop what I'm doing. The debilitating, crippling pain that since August had become constant, daily, all day long, radiating down my legs and my ankles, causing me to spend most of the day nauseous and crying, um, is gone. So, oh, wow, that's awesome. And I still have the little backache problems with movement and walking that I've been dealing with for years that are related to the stenosis and not really bad scoliosis that I have going on with the nerve block injection to help me with. The hope is that it lasts for enough months that I can do it twice a year, maybe three times a year at the most, and avoid the really, really risky major surgery that would be necessary to, to fix the back. So I'm hoping for that. And I'm so happy to say that for the first time in years, one day last week, I took a walk fast enough and long enough, including hills, to get exercise out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's been years since I've been able to do that. So I, I appreciate all of the prayers and keep them coming. It works. Um, and you can see I walk without the pain. I, I use it sometimes because I don't know when one of those little crippling moments will come, but I'm walking upright, standing straighter, and it's hard to tell with the masks on, but I can tell the difference looking in the mirror. My eyes are mine again. You know, you're just like that constant pain just had me to the point that I didn't even know who I was when I looked at myself. And so it makes a huge difference, and I have all of the love and support of this rich family to really thank for that, so I appreciate that. Now we're working on the rotator cuff. I'm seeing one of the scalar surgeons next week because I'm not sure what we're going to do with the right shoulder, but that's minor compared to the other stuff. I'll live with that. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're coming to that. Don't forget, we are collecting gift cards um, for those in the. <laughs> that's how I was going to ask you, Janine. Did you bring the box? We're going to have a box sitting out there that you can drop your gift cards in. Um, just make sure to attach the receipt to it in case there's some snack food with the gift cards. We're requesting um, thing, grocery cards, Amazon cards, you know, things like that that people can use for everything uh, for our Christmas handouts this year. Anyone who's interested in being on council should get a hold of Chris Paul Patty, um, Chuck Kahn, and Cheryl's not here. And anyone, all of you, listen up carefully. If you do not want your telephone number or your email shared with the rest of the congregation, you have to let Terry know Monday because we are finishing up the directory and we're going to send it to all of you digitally. So you'll have it, you can put it in your drive or whatever, and be able to access it on your phone and you don't have to wonder how to get a hold of someone. But if you, for some reason, don't want your um, email or telephone number out to everybody, you got to let us know soon. Pastor, will that have addresses or just email and phone? It will have everything. And the end of home addresses. Just like you get all right, the time, okay. okay? That's the end of my announcements. Anything from anyone else? Okay. Let us bow our heads and prepare our hearts to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are slow to anger and quick to forgive, O oh God.
doing communion as you walk out the door, please remember that our communion table is open and all are welcome to communion. Oh, we're going to start from here, go back, and then from back up. Thank you. 